Ladies and gentlemen, this is to the Com video. We're going to be going through the daily tech news, as you'd expect by now. Specifically, this is focused for those of you who are new on gaming. So, there's a couple of interesting tidbits from AMD. First things first, we're going to start out with the Polaris range of graphics cards regarding the release date, and then we're going to move over to AMD's Zen lineup of CPUs on its release date, plus a few other details too. So, I'm sure most of you have heard by now that Caspian is a live show, which is, well, basically the company's preparing for. All of their senior staff are flying over, ready to put on this live show, which is going to detail some of the, I guess you could say, features of the next iteration of the GCN architecture. It's going to be the fourth iteration. And we know that the Polaris range of cards is going to uh, be created on 14nm FinVet process. It's going to support HDMI 2.0a, DisplayPort 1.3, large improvements in terms of performance per watt and all that jazz. But one question we've not been answered is when it's going to be released. Now supposedly the latest rumours show that NVIDIA are planning to unveil their Pascal ra range of cards, a GTC, which is in April for a launch date in June, which is both the GTX 1080 and the 1070, or whatever they end up being called. However, these rumours also peg AMD for doing exactly the same thing. So in short, and obviously we're not sure of the date, for example, AMD could be released the 15th, and NVIDIA could be released on the 27th, for sake of argument, but AMD are supposedly also looking to release in June, maybe slipping into July, once again, depending on silicon, the number of parts they can uh, manage to squeeze in, shipping and all of that jazz. <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting situation because if that is the case, it means that we as customers are going to get a really, really, really good um, June. Because it means that, let's say for example, and I would say this regardless of who launches first, if AMD launch first or Nvidia launch first, if it's only just a week or so away for the next company, unless you're really tied into their their ecosystem, by which I mean, let's say you've got G-Sync monitors, it's unlikely that you might want to make the shift to AMD's hardware, unless, for example, you've got an older G-Sync monitor and maybe it's getting a bit long in the tooth and you're potentially looking for an upgrade anyway. But if you've just bought like really shiny new ultra high definition, ultra resolution monitor with all of the trimmings and especially if it's a surround sound, uh, sorry, surround setup, you probably don't want to make the jump. But for everyone else, for, the, for us regular folk, it's a really good time just to say, nope, not buying anything, as tempting as it is, and it bloody well is. You as well as I know that when you see those 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 cards, you know, the, the shipping and you know the, all the, see all the boxes of the arse and you just think to yourself, holy shit, I want that damn thing. But I would probably suggest, if it's only a couple of weeks, you might as well wait for both companies, maybe even a week more, to wait for the drivers to mature and see which one offers the best performance. It really is, especially if you're going to be plonking down a good chunk of change, a really good thing to do. Because the worst thing you can do is have buyer's regret when it's an expensive card. That sucks. And I've had that before once, and it was not good. And it was my own fault. It was when I was... Just kind of getting back into PC gaming again, I got some money, I did not do my research, and I just happened to buy the GeForce 5700, not the Ultra either, and it was a massive mistake, because at the time I was really used to NVIDIA's hardware, and I really should have bought the 9700 Pro, and eventually I got the 9800 Pro, it was a, that was a bloody lesson learned, I'll tell you. Anyway... Let's talk about Zen, shall we? Because Zen has been somewhat absent. It's not to say that, you know, no one cares about it. It's just to say that news at the moment has been really focused on, well, Polaris and Pascal rather than any of AMD or Intel's next generation CPUs. So, a new source is claiming that AMD have taped out the 8-core Summit Ridge CPU dies in January and are already running through testing and validation. That's pretty damn good. Back in 2015, for those of you who don't remember, maybe you weren't watching us back then, or you weren't so interested in tech, or maybe it just slipped past you, AMD had managed to tape out Zen, which is obviously good. That means essentially the core had been finalized. It meant that the basic design in principle had been finished. Now, what does that mean? Well, the CPU supposedly is going to feature eight 
high performance cores and they are going to offer multi-threading this for those of you who aren't familiar means that that's 16 cores now this is just with 95 watts of tdp and what will all of that mean well theoretically you're going to be looking at a ridiculous amount of performance and obviously, I don't want to bullshit you and say that it's going to be faster than Skylake or slower than Skylake because ultimately all we have are quotes from engineers, from software developers who aren't necessarily working for AMD, but they're obviously under NDA, so they can't say that it is, let's say for the sake of argument, Skylake is 100 and they can't say that Zen offers 105%. They just can't do that. All they can say is that it's comparable, or it's good, or it's promising. That's all they can say. But, the good news is, for us regular folk, I think this is going to be a really good shot in the arm for the desktop industry. Primarily because of the increased level of, or increased number of cores. Obviously, it does depend upon the pricing. But Lisa Su, along with many others at AMD, are all pointing out that financially they want to have a better year and they also do not want to disappoint customers and that's the key here it's not just necessarily how can i put it it's not just necessarily money it's expectation now and i think it's fair to say that there's been a lot of expectation i was actually on a twitter conversation with a couple of folks over at amd along with just a couple of other users uh, just yesterday and it's kind of funny because, you know, there's this level of expectation now we've all got for, you know, all of the main companies. And I don't just mean in terms of the hardware, we mean software and what we're looking to see over this year. And it's obvious that expectations for this generation, whether it's CPUs, whether it's GPUs, whether it's software, they're really high. Like 2014, not really. 2013 definitely wasn't really that much of expectation. In 2015, some level of expectation, but let's face it, not much really happened. Now, 2016, a lot of expectation. We want to see the new architectures being introduced. We want to see the reduction in size to 16 or 14 nm. And obviously with Zen, they are looking to aim for at least a 40% IPC from their previous course. So... They're trying to achieve greater than. Greater than could be 40% just, or it could be 42%, or it could be 5,000%. We just don't know. Realistically, however, you're looking at the low 40%, which is pretty damn good, considering that that is per core, or rather per thread. Going to be interesting, don't you think? I bloody well think. Anyway, with all that said... I am very much looking forward to what they're going to put out here. There's going to be improved integers, improved scheduling. They're going to be pushing towards a more Intel-like design overall. And just generally speaking, the way that they're putting together the CPU is a lot more akin to how AMD used to. And I mean more along the lines of like the old Athlons, if you remember that far back. It should be pretty good. It should be the floating point. Uh, floating point, excuse me. Performance is going to be considered to be better. It should mean that we're going to see improvements on uh, single integer performance and also stuff like AVX and just just it's going to be a lot better. Let's just go with that. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going now. But if you can do the likey subscribe -y thing, that would be absolutely fantastic. But for now, I'll leave you to it. Take care. Bye for now.